Well, it's a different view. I don't know if it's better because she's still fast asleep. But if she pops her head up, we're going to be perfectly aligned to be able to see her. We've just moved around a little bit, and at least it's a little closer to where she is. And hopefully from here, if she does decide to come down the mound, we'll be able to see her a lot better because she'll be able to then come past us and through. But the good news is at least that we've got signal from down here. And you can see what I mean about it still being quite thick. So it's in this little Tamburti grove. And we've come down now below the mound, and she's kind of sprawled out this way. And still taking it very easy. She hasn't even lifted her head. Even when we came down here, she was still quite fast asleep. So it's going to take a bit of time for her to wake up. I was hoping that she would have started to stir already by now. But as it stands, still taking it very easy. Look how the ear still works. So even though she's fast asleep, she's still aware of her environment. No, yeah. You were wondering if a leopard becomes old, does it become more aggressive? Not necessarily. So, I mean, in the Sabi Sands, many of the leopards here get very old. In fact, Karula's mother and Tandi's grandmother was a leopard that went past 19 years old, which if you read books is unheard of, really. And she was in no way aggressive when she was older. The problem with older leopards is, and where they get themselves into trouble is that they start to, their claws start to wear down, their teeth start to wear down, and hunting becomes difficult. They slow down a little bit. Much like us as people, the older we get, the slower we start to become. And the same thing applies for them, and they start to really battle to find food. And then when they're in areas where there's a heavy sort of livestock or um, people presence, they get themselves into trouble by then turning their attention to that. Remember, as a person, you will pass an old sick leopard. You are in no way a sort of fast-moving animal. We've got no thick hide. We don't have horns or anything like that. And so an animal that's desperate might take that opportunity and try and sort of come after you and see if it can actually kill you and eat you. So that's where they get themselves into trouble or they go into a, a pen with you know sheep or goats or cows or, or chickens and they, they go and feed off those and then people get upset with them. So it's not necessarily that they get more aggressive, it's just that they get more desperate because they're struggling to find the same amount of food as they would have found when they were a little bit younger. Tandi though, she's still in her prime, she's starting to get onto the older side of life. She's now, I think, about 11 years old, if I'm not mistaken, 10 or 11, somewhere there. And she's getting onto the older side. We know that Karula, when she disappeared, was just over 13 years old. And so, you know, Tandy's still got a bit of time left in her, and hopefully she'll be able to last quite a lot longer and be like her grandmother and live to at least the sort of 16, 17s that a lot of the females in the Sabi Sands do sort of get to. But Safari was quite an amazing leopard, which is her grandmother. Not only did she live past 19, but she did that for the last sort of six years without one of her eyes. So she had one eye that was badly damaged and swollen and full of blood. And so she really battled to be able to see out of it. Well, she wouldn't have been able to see anything out of it, but she was so successful. I remember the first time I came into this northern section, I, the first leopard I saw was actually Mafufanyan, and the second one was Safari. And she was the first leopard that I saw up in a tree in this area. And she was sitting high in this marula tree with a massive male impala that she had killed with one eye. And already at that stage, she was about sort of just uh, just before 18 years old. So she was quite old already. And to bring down a fully grown male impala at that age is really quite something. So she was a very special cat and a cat that saved our bacon a lot of the time by being out and about quite a lot. She used to use the vehicles to hunt. So every time you'd come past and she was near, she would actually come trotting towards the road and then walk in the road, particularly at night when you had your spotlight out because she knew that was the best time to start hunting. So a little naughty on that regard, but she was really a great leopard and had such a nice relaxed demeanor much like her daughter and then her granddaughters after that. So very special cat. And the other cat that I managed to see in this area that was very, very old was Tavangumi. Now Tavangumi was a leopard that I spent her time around sort of Singita Sand River and the Tavangumi little copies, which are copies a small stony outcrop, basically a rocky outcrop. And she, I believe, went over 20. So those are both very old leopards, which is pretty amazing. And even if you read books, you'll see that most cats or leopards seldom reach 20, even in a zoo environment. So to reach that in the wild is absolutely phenomenal. 
Now, Tundi is slowly starting to kind of bite at flies and seems like she's getting a little bit more restless. But we'll stay with her and carry on and hope that she does start to get moving and starts to sort of show us what she can do. And while we do that, I believe Taylor is still driving around and it must be beautiful from wherever she is on Chitra because the sun will be a lot easier to see than when we are in this deep drainage line.